So I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight to the orientation. My name is Mike. Some of you may have uh, received emails from me. In fact, most of you probably have. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing some of the things that are going to happen uh, during during the next session. So in order to do that, we're going to have this little this little meeting, and I'm going to give it over to Steve Olson, the program manager over at UNCC. Steve. Thanks, Mike. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm so excited to see you all here, um, and especially a uh, big kudos to those with their camera on. I'm always appreciating that. Uh, but welcome to the CWCT program. Uh, we're really excited about this, and we've been uh, rolling on with this uh, uh, this whole year, and we've really enjoyed being able to, to offer this opportunity to, to veterans, to members of the first responder community. Um, and to other adult learners that make it into our program. So welcome. Uh, CWCT is really cool. You're, you're part of something that's, that's different than a lot of other programs that either you pay for or that uh, we get something out of that's different than just measuring success by you passing your certs, you upskilling in your career, or looking for a better job. So we're excited that you're here for that. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the program, uh, about attendance, uh, resources, uh, we're going to introduce you to all of the faculty that we have. Um, you're going to learn about how to access your My Ivy account and how to actually look up your courses and, and access your Zoom lectures. And then we'll go through uh, a little more of the program tracks that you've already selected, whether systems admin, forensics, or AI. And uh, then we'll turn it over, wrap up, and talk about some cybersecurity jobs with the government. But really, I'm here. I, uh, I served a few years in the Army and uh, went on to join the world of higher education and really believe in this program because it is a really great way to further yourself. Uh, I know myself transitioning from the service into uh, this industry and others can sometimes be difficult. And there's a lot of pieces that go into navigating that. Uh, I think we're well positioned in our program to be able to offer really great certificates and a very cohesive interdisciplinary program to you all that'll set you up well. Um, so again, welcome. Please enjoy tonight. Please ask questions in the comments. And uh, if you haven't already, and this will be mentioned later, you should each have a smaller invitation to a non-mandatory uh, meeting with your uh, spe specific institution, whether it's UNC Charlotte, like myself, UTC, or Ivy Tech, or Purdue. And uh, that'll be like kind of a smaller group to answer more questions. It probably should be next week, but you'll hear more info about that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn over to Chrissy to actually start talking about the nuts and bolts of this operation. Thanks so much, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. Um, so my name is Chrissy Duncan. Um, all of you participants would have received emails from me throughout the application process. Uh, many, many emails probably. Um, so I am the program manager for uh, Ivy Tech uh, portion of, of this program. Um, so so there are four program managers and you are each assigned to a program manager. And what that program manager is there to do is to answer questions. If you're uh, having issues, reaching out to them, who do I go to for this? Um, I need to defer my attendance. Um, so you are either assigned to me um, through Ivy Tech, Steve through University of North Carolina, uh, Charlotte. Um, Rex Mudge is our... Um, Purdue University Northwest program manager, and then Steve Ryder is our University of Tennessee Chattanooga uh, program manager. So again, as Steve mentioned, you will all probably be receiving an email from your assigned manager um, upcoming here within the next few days about doing a smaller welcome to the program, meet your program manager type meeting. So um, that information would have been included in all of the communication I sent. The very first email you got about your My Ivy accounts, your assigned program manager would have been in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And uh, just to let you all know, um, we are getting some storms here in Northwest Indiana. So hopefully my internet uh, stays, uh, stays stable for you all. Um, so I am gonna share my screen here really quick. Um, and this part is just a general overview of our program. Um, and it'll, it'll just give some basic information uh, that we've shared throughout our time here. So this is uh, the CWCT program is a consortium of the four universities. Um, as we've mentioned, Ivy Tech, uh, Purdue University Northwest, University of Tennessee Chattanooga, and University of North Carolina Charlotte. Um, and then um, 
this is the, as Steve already mentioned, the general um, agenda um, where I'll give a program overview. And then again, you'll meet um, the instructors and just, uh, just learn more about the program. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and it will be sent to you afterwards, as well as a copy of this, this portion uh, will be sent in that as well. So um, I know some of the uh, type might be small for you to see on your screen, um, so it will be sent to you so you can view it. So I just wanted to remind everybody a little bit about the program. Um, so there are three tracks that are offered through this program. When you were admitted, you were admitted under one of those three tracks. And that's the artificial intelligence track, the digital forensics track, or the system administration track. Um, we will go into greater detail later about each of those tracks, what courses need to be taken, a little bit about the certifications, things like that. Um, just as a reminder, um, as a part of each track, you will be taking six non-credit college level courses. Um, so they are non-credit because these are more prepare, um, meant to prepare you to take the workforce certifications. Um, the courses are offered um, via live virtual lectures um, that will happen six hours throughout the week. However, we know because of time zone differences, we know because we have some active duty military uh, that may be overseas, we know with work schedules, we know uh, we have some law enforcement or first responders that are working um, odd shift work. So all of those lectures are recorded for participants. So if you cannot attend the live lecture, you can go in and watch the recorded lecture. And I will, um, when we talk about Ivy Learn later, we will be talking about how you do that. Um, there are no in-person offerings for this program. It is all virtual. Um, each session is eight weeks. Um, participants will take one to two courses per session. Um, so it is, you, the course itself is eight weeks and then you'll get a two week break and then the next session will start. So a new session essentially starts every 10, 10 weeks, um, except for this uh, January because of the holidays, we got a little bit longer, but in general, eight week um, courses. So they do move pretty quickly. Um, each course may lead to an industry recognized certification uh, um, and um, most of our courses, except for a few, will lead to one of those certifications. Typically, um, while you take six courses, five of those six courses will lead to a certification. And this grant will cover testing fees for up to three certifications. Um, so you, as participants, will need to decide which three certifications you want your vouchers to cover. Um, and you will have the option then if there is a course that um, you don't want to use your voucher for, you can either just pay for the certification yourself, or you could just choose not to take the certification. More information is going to be given on how that works once you actually start the classes. Um, I believe it's the forensics track now that actually all six courses lead to a certification. So um, opportunity to earn um, a lot of certifications within this program to help improve your current uh, job um, opportunities or upcoming job opportunities. There is also a possibility, um, an opportunity for these particular courses to um, count towards four credit coursework at the four participating institutions. Um, so they may crosswalk into courses that might be needed for a, an actual degree program at the four consortium institutions. Um, if you go elsewhere to one of the four, you're interested in pursuing an associate's degree or bachelor's degree at a different institution other than the four that are part of this consortium, it would be up to those institutions whether they have a crosswalk um, for for this coursework. Um, so it does, you do have the opportunity to gain pathways to pursue degrees at the four, one of the four institutions um, if you uh, desire to. We are working on what those crosswalks would look like at the four institutions and they are not finalized yet. Um, so I wanted to specifically focus on this because this question got asked a ton during our last orientation. Um, and that is, can I take courses outside of my chosen admitted path? 
Um, so you got admitted to system administration, but I wanna take one of the digital forensics classes. Um, so as a reminder, all participants are admitted under one track, okay? Um, now, you might be able to take a course outside of your track if there is room available after registration has been completed for those who need that class. We can never guarantee that there will be room in those additional classes. Um, so while you may want to take additional courses outside of your track, we cannot, we cannot guarantee that that will be a possibility. We will try, um, but again, not a guarantee. Um, so students must complete all six courses within their track to complete the program. So there is no picking and choosing. I want this course from this track. I want this course from this track. I want this course. You have an assigned six courses that are part of that track that you chose. Um, and you may be able to get waivers for some of those six classes if you already have the associated certification. So if you already have the CompTIA A plus certification, you're not gonna have to take the CompTIA A plus course if that uh, certification is still valid and not expired. So again, I'm gonna repeat it again, because even though I went over this last time, it got asked in the chat a lot. You might be able to take courses outside of your track if there is room available after registration for those who need it are done. Okay, so here's your training schedule. So one question that gets, how long will this take for me to finish? That's really gonna depend on how many courses you take at a time. Um, so this training schedule is on the website. Um, which is just www.cwct.us. And that will redirect you to the Purdue Northwest website, which has all of this information. Um, so if you take one course at a time and you need to take all six courses, it's gonna take you six sessions to finish. Uh, some will start with two classes, go down to one. Some will start with one, go up to two the next session. So it's really gonna just depend. Uh, some will start and then take a session off because life happens. Um, so how long it takes you to finish will really depend on how quickly you're finishing the six courses that you're required to take. Um, the grant does end um, after regular session 10, which ends July of 2023. Um, so you do only have so long to finish the program um, once you start it, because then the grant ends and the program will no longer be offered. So as a reminder on um, what this program, what costs and support are covered by this grant. So all of the assessments that you took to get into the program, congratulations for completing those assessments, by the way. Um, there was the English, the math, and the IT assessment. That was all covered and free under this grant, including if you had to take the study paths, the training modules, tutoring, any of that was all free and covered um, by this. This grant will cover the test fees of up to three certifications. So again, for those additional certifications um, that you might have the opportunity to take, you can either just not take them or um, you can pay for those out of the pocket. So what a lot of people will do is they will save their three vouchers for the more expensive certifications and either not take the, 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 um, the, cheaper ones, I don't like to use the word cheaper, or um, they'll just pay out of pocket for that. And this, it's just the test fees that are covered. So any additional proctoring fees or fees that might be charged by the testing sites um, might not be covered. Um, but for the most part, most testing centers will offer, you can either go to a testing center in your area, um, they may offer virtual testing. All of that information is going to be provided to you when you pass your classes and get your voucher. Um, the courses all, so even though it covers three certifications, all six courses are covered and free under this program. Um, so the six courses, plus if you take any additional courses, if there is room, um, those courses would also be covered um, just Again, the certifications, you only get three vouchers, no matter how many classes you take. Um, so the courses with live virtual faculty instruction are covered. Um, and again, those, those are recorded for those who, who cannot attend. 
We also have what are called cybersecurity support analysts. These uh, staff members can provide free tutoring. They can provide free technical support. They are providing virtual machine development and maintenance so that you can access virtual machine, the virtual machines you need to as a part of your class. All of that is covered and free as a part of this program. And finally, all online books and materials, um, if the classes have them, um, are covered under this. Um, all of the classes use online materials. If there is an opportunity for a hard book, um, then you would be responsible for ordering that on your own and covering that on your own. But the online books and materials, if the courses use them, are covered and free under this program. So and, that- And just to clarify that point, hard, hard cover books are not required. Correct. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, some people like the phys having the physical books and they prefer that, but yes, they are not required. So, so that's everything that is covered under this program um, by the grant um, that is um, provided to us. Um, there is uh, sometimes that people would like to prepare um, for this program. Um, there is a, there are, and some of you, um, some of you that were admitted later after this was developed, were, were, that you were provided this information in your admissions emails. But on our website, again, www.cwct.us, if you go to the training schedule, there is the self-preparation that you can go through. And there are different self-prep classes that you can complete if you feel like you need a little extra preparation for to get started um, here in a few weeks. Um, so again, this will be sent to you. So then you actually will have the, um, the direct link. Um, and then uh, this training paths actually is gonna be covered by some other, uh, is going to be covered within um, by our, our PIs. So um, this can get brought up when they um, go to talk about that. So I think that is it for, for this portion as far as the program overview. Um, and I don't know if there were any questions in there, um, but that is it. Let me stop sharing this. Um, that is it um, for that part. So I believe next is um, Matthew and Edwina. Um, you guys were going to discuss the non-attendance, some of the resources, um, those types of things. Sure, happy to come in. Hopefully I'm coming in okay as we travel from Chicago back home. Uh, so, yes, and the question that came in, uh, hardcover books, for faculty, you can get hardcover books from the publishers. Not all of these courses even have a hardcover book. Some of our courses are, are courses that don't really exist in other formats yet, so we're adding some new coursework in, so um, the only way you can get it is in an electronic form. Um, if you have a requirement or need for something as a hard copy due to a uh, a disability or some other need along those lines. Uh, we do have other resources there. And so that kind of leads into what we're talking about for this next part. A couple of things I do want to uh, stress is that these are full college courses, even though they are non-credit. They're on the non-credit side because uh, myself and the other faculty um, have to go through a number of, uh, of bureaucratic processes to get them to go through uh, the colleges to become approved, which can take a year to two years at a time to make that work. On the non-credit side, we're able to make that move much faster and meet these na national needs. So uh, my role here for this grant, I'm the director of cybersecurity grants for the Lake County campus at Ivy Tech Community College. I'm one of the PIs for this grant, principal investigators um, that the funding flows through. Uh, you'll meet the other uh, the others on this grant uh, later on as, as we go through the, the evening here. Uh, but my role really is focused on supporting the instructors and through our support team with Edwina Aponte and her team uh, to support the students directly. So if you have issues with any of the lab resources, trying to find a way to get in, uh, we handle most of the issues. There are some uh, like just having a general Ivy Tech login or Ivy Learn, the, the general learning management system we use. We're not able to directly help you with that. 
but we can get you to those resources. Everything else is inside of our system though. Um, and there are multiple systems that you may have to connect to. In your first meetings with your classes, you'll learn how to use uh, resources like NetLab if you're in A plus or the Linux course. Um, if you're in A plus or the Python course, you're gonna be in another resource that sounds the same, but it's different, right? Called NetAcad, that's from Cisco for Networking Academy to short the NetAcad. And that provides the electronic resources. We have that NetLab uh, is developed through a company called NDG or Network Dev Group. They are um, all of our virtual labs. Instead of having to have a really powerful computer or several computers, we use the NetLab system to support what um, you need with just anything that can access the internet. I recommend a tablet or some sort of uh, regular computing device. Uh, you can technically do it on a phone, but it's going to be very difficult to do it on a phone, uh, even with a large phone like I use because I'm going blind. But hey, so um, I want to introduce uh, Edwina Aponte um, briefly to talk about her support team, if you're here. Yes, I am here. Uh, so okay. yeah, as hello, as Matt was stating, if you have any issues with NetLab or need any resources, I'm the go-to person uh, along with my team. So um, I can definitely put my email in the chat. If you guys ever need help with uh, getting, if you have problems uh, getting into NetLab or need any resources uh, virtually, I can definitely help you with that and along with my team. Okay, great, thank you. We also have teaching assistants uh, for the classes in addition to the instructors to help um, the instructor. Some of these classes have larger uh, numbers, in particular the first term, because we've noticed a lot of students dropping off after the first couple of weeks or afterwards. Part of that is because maybe it's not what you expected. We get that. Please give us that feedback um, so that we can make sure we're getting our message out there properly as to what we're really offering here. Um, the courses are not a boot camp for you to come in and do it in two weeks or one week and go get your certification. That doesn't work well for almost anyone. It works in very rare cases and it's very expensive. Our partnerships with Cisco and Red Hat, um, AWS, um, Oracle, all these different partnerships that we've built into it, we're expected that students are going to participate for four weeks or more. We have to do that. And in our format, what we've tested through many different um, colleges is that we want to make sure students are getting this content for at least eight weeks so you can absorb the material and show that you know how to practically apply it. Once you have that, then we have certification prep. That's a different scenario. Um, so we want to make sure you have these six core courses, depending upon which track you're in, so you have the requisite knowledge skill sets to go out in the workforce and do the work. And then you can choose from any of those three certifications, as Chrissy was mentioning, um, within your track to prepare for that certification. That might take you a week to eight weeks. We do have it set up where you have eight weeks of access for that after you successfully completed the course. So to help you make sure you're staying on track, one of the things that we're doing is the administrators of the grant, we supervise the instructors and you'll see a supervisor listed in your course, along with that cwct-support at ivytech.edu email so that you have additional support in addition to your instructor um, to get help with your course or other issues you might be having. Um, if you're running into issues um, with uh, other financial issues or whatever it might be, right? We're not a bank, but we do have resources to help um, students if there is a problem. There's a lot of things that have come up from COVID and other areas uh, that have made that a little easier, but we're here to help you be successful. We have a number of ways to help you get there. Um, so, we do expect though in return that you're gonna be turning your work in at least once a week. You also should be attending the classes. I apologize, we're gonna pay the toll here. Um, you have to uh, make sure you're attending the classes. Now, some of you may be in a different time zone. As long as you're communicating that with your instructor, fine, I, 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 we get that. So, uh, but we wanna make sure there's that communication between you and the instructor and you know when you can meet with them and with your other students because 
it's not all about what you're getting from the instructor. It's also about what do you get from the other students in your cohort. There's much to learn from each other. So um, if you're not responding to the instructor or to our request, you within 48 hours, um, same thing that our instructors are supposed to respond to you within 48 hours as, as well as us. That's a two-way street. But if you're not responding back, we may drop you from the course that we're asking about. If we drop you from both courses, we may drop you from the program. We're gonna check that after one week to see if you've been participating. And we'll be checking it every two weeks after that. So every odd week, we'll be going to make in to make sure that you are participating. And if you're not participating, we'll send you a notice to say, hey, are you there? Do you need help? Are you healthy? How can we help? And if we don't get a response back, we will automatically drop you. That doesn't mean you're kicked out of the program. That means we're dropping you from the course because it does not look like you're participating. And we have to meet certain guidelines with the National uh, Centers for Academic Excellence who fund this grant, as well as our partners who are providing these materials to us, to you at, in a, a free manner. So uh, that, that's what we're asking is that we're gonna get that feedback and that you will participate. And um, if there are issues, let us know. Any questions? I saw a lot of things pop up in there. Anything I need to address from the chat in particular? Uh, yes. So there was one question I don't get because, well, somebody asked about the minimum requirements and that was answered, but then somebody for uh, the computer, but then somebody asked, will the M1 Max work fine? I'm not sure what the M1 Max is. Uh, that's, uh, I, I don't know if that's just, if will an Apple product probably, will a Mac work? Um, oh, oh, M-A-C-S. Yeah. Uh, yes. Max is fine. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as they have, I think it was uh, uh, Windows 10 with four gigabytes memory minimal uh, required, and then a Windows 10 with 16 gigs or higher, i7 or higher is recommended, correct? Yeah, if you wanted to run these labs yourself, like you can set up a virtual machine uh, to run the labs locally for, for many of them, but um, you'll need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. But often that's Beyond what we can teach in these courses, um, if you're not familiar with that, um, that arena, uh, because we want to make sure you're doing it in a safe manner, particularly when you get into to hacking and forensics courses, we've got these set up in a sandbox environment. So the worst case scenario is you restart it. And it only takes a few seconds for it to pull up. It's a very fast system. Um, sometimes running the operations might take longer, so you may have to wait, just like with any system. Uh, but uh, it depends upon what operation you're doing. So it can be where, where students I've seen um, have not waited long enough for the operation to, to finish processing on a Linux system. And if you're not familiar with command line environments or Linux environments, regardless of your track, please go take that Linux unhatched. Uh, like Christy was mentioning earlier, these other things that you can get done in four hours for most people. Some might take up to eight, uh, but that'll get you familiar with what a command line environment is, what is Linux. Um, but yeah, virtual machines uh, are not difficult to use once you know how to set them up, <laughs> but it, it's not necessarily easy to get started. Other questions? Matt, can I chime in on that one real quick? Sure. Um, so with the M1 Mac, uh, locally installed Windows virtual machines would be an issue, um, but I believe most of the classes I, I teach Security Plus uh, are using the online labs. So if you're using the online labs, you can use a Mac, Chromebook, Windows, whatever. It's only an issue if you need to install a local virtual machine. Yeah, you won't have to install anything locally. There's no requirement for that in any of these courses. So you could use uh, a Google tablet or, or something along those lines and still it, it will work. Um, it, but if you're trying to download stuff locally, you could do that on your own. We're not trying to support that through this program that's just not feasible in the time frame. We're trying to allow it so that people can get done in six months if they wish, but most people are changing to one course at a time because the load is, is heavy. I, I don't want to make this sound like it's an easy program because it's free, it's not. Um, it's not intended to wear you out either. Uh, ideally, your quizzes should be about a, an hour a week. 
uh, for each course. Uh, your labs, though, may take you uh, three to eight hours a week. Hopefully, you're getting most of that done in the class, but some people, because each person has a different set of knowledge as they come in, it may take you longer. Um, just realize, treat it just like you would any college class. Any other, any other questions? Is the AWS Cloud Foundations pre-course work similar to the Cloud Practitioner Certification? Well, are you talking about the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification? It is the same course, yes. Yeah. So you could sit for, that one does have a, a certification that you could sit for. It's about $50. Um, those kind of things we recommend typically pay out of pocket because some of these certifications we offer through here are several hundred dollars. You may want to let our program pay for that. But that's up to you. We're happy to use one of your vouchers for 50 bucks if you want. <laughs> it's, it's your choice, right? So uh, good questions. Anything else? Uh, something got mentioned about jobs, but I know we'll be talking about jobs later on um, in the in, yeah. in the program. So that'll be addressed. That'll be addressed later. Okay. Nope, I think that's all the questions I saw. All right, great. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you, Matthew. So now I would like to introduce the instructors, and I'm going to start with the A, the CompTIA A plus on Mondays and Wednesdays. We have Ben Marrero. Ben. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? All right. Yes. Uh, a good foundation for uh, what you're going to get into requires an understanding or foundation, as I mentioned, of computers. So the A plus class is teaching you all about the computer basics, uh, hard, hardware, as well as software, operating systems, and things like that. It's a great class. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, you'll be able to if you haven't already done it, you'll be able to build your own computers after you're done with this class. It also leads to A plus certification. So it's great, uh, a good class. I can't uh, wait to get started. I'm hoping to see most of you there. Also, I just want to say thank you to all of you because I know most of you are either active or reserved military. Thank you for your service. I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much, Ben. Next, I'd like to introduce the... Next, I would like to introduce uh, the next instructor, Connie Chastain, who's teaching CompTIA A plus on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Connie, is she here? All right, then we'll move on. And I'd like to introduce uh, the Saturday instructor, Dima Yasin. Dima. Hello, everyone. My name is Dima Yassin. I'm going to be your instructor on the Saturday, Sunday um, classes. Um, it's a pleasure to be in this program and to meet all of you. And I look forward to it. Please do not hesitate at any time to contact me for questions or if you have any concerns. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. All right. Thank you very much, Dima. Uh, next, I would like to introduce the Linux System Administra Administration Instructor on Mondays and Wednesdays, Bill M. Bill, is he here tonight? All right, then we'll move on, and I will introduce Herman K., who will be teaching Linux on Tuesdays and Thursdays. No, Herman? All right, and finally, Bill Warden, who teaches Linux on Saturdays and Sundays. I think Herman is here. I see him here. Is he having problems with the with his uh, connection part? Perhaps we can come back to him if we have to. Uh, so I'd like to move on and introduce the Python Essentials instructor, Chris Roberts, teaching on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Chris. Greetings. Uh, 
I'm not on video today, but uh, yes, I am the Python instructor. This course will take you through uh, the fundamentals of computer programming, the basics of uh, programming structure, programming logic and design. Uh, then we will get into a number of advanced uh, Python topics. Uh, there is a tie-in in, in this course to a lot of cybersecurity related topics as this is a cybersecurity program. And the course does lead to the Python Institute uh, Certified Associate and Tongue Guide, the Python Institute Certified Associate in Python Programming Certification if you choose to sit for that certification. All right, thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce the Security Plus instructor for Mondays and Wednesdays, Jeffrey Edwards. Hello, uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in your respective time zone. My name is Jeffrey Edwards, and as he mentioned, I'm teaching the cybersecurity course. Cybersecurity, the uh, Security Plus, it's, a, it's a, a really great way to get into the field. You get an opportunity to look at what we call various control domains. Um, the various areas of security that are evaluated when you're looking to understand and really secure an organization's environment. So uh, I look forward to meeting and working with you guys uh, as well. I am a, a Navy veteran, so we may have some interesting conversations along there. Glad to be here. All right. My apologies. I, I skipped Valerie, who is going to be teaching A-plus on Mondays and Wednesdays. So Valerie, if you'd like to say a few words. Sure, thank you. I'm Valerie Goulet and I am uh, teaching IT Essentials, which is the class that helps prepare you for your A plus certification exam. I taught it this last uh, term for the CWCT program and I really enjoy my students. You guys are awesome group. Let me tell you, um, so much energy and excitement. I and I am excited to be working with each of you. So I'm looking forward to getting started again in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks, Valerie. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Robert Searsma, who is teaching Security Plus on Saturdays and Sundays. Hey everyone, and thank you, Michael, for getting my name right. That's so rare. <laughs> um, Jeff already mentioned a, a good introduction to the class. It's I like to say Security Plus is a mile wide, inch deep. It's, we go over everything. Uh, it's, it's very complimentary to many of the other courses. If you're working on cyber ops at the same time, it's a great second course. Uh, if you're doing uh, Linux at some point, there's some Linux labs in there. So we will cover a ton. And kind of like Valerie mentioned, I love working with the students in this course. I'd say the, the discussions we had in the first term were some of the most engaging that I've had uh, talking through uh, cybersecurity and the introduction and the backgrounds that everyone has. So looking forward to those of you that will be uh, up and working with me at 9 a.m. on the weekends. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, next, we have Spiros, who is going to be teaching cyber ops on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Spiros Baniatsis, and I'll be teaching cyber ops. Um, and I'm very, very excited about this course because of it's a higher elevation than cybersecurity. Along the way, we'll be talking about new threats in the threat uh, intelligence, intelligence analysis, and also what tools we have in order to be able to, to detect those threats, how we can be able to ameliorate them. Uh, because as we all know, basically to avoid that 100%, it's next to impossible. And this uh, course basically will be uh, directed for people that they want to work in SOC, security operation centers, or they want to get in uh, job as security analysts uh, or network or network analysts. Some that has to do basically with uh, uh, how they can secure the, the network and how they can uh, uh, increase the defense zones, you know, the firewalls and uh, the DMZs and uh, basically will give you a, a higher understanding of what an SOC uh, analyst can do. 
and I'm extremely excited. As I said, it's something that I have very dear in my heart. And um, my background, of course, is in uh, cyber terrorism. Uh, that's uh, the, the, where, where most of my research is done. And which, of course, you know, has led me to uh, get involved very much into cybersecurity analysis in all different levels. I'm looking very much forward to work with each, each and every one of you in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Spiros. Uh, I'd like to introduce the instructor for cyber ops on Saturdays and Sundays, Joe Bowden. Joe. Hi, everyone. Joe here. Welcome. And I want to uh, just kind of jump off of what Spiro said. The cyber ops uh, class is a fantastic place to be when you're take, when you're looking into getting into the security operations centers. My background is I'm retired Navy. I work for Iowa Tech Community College at their Cyber Academy. And we have a fantastic time on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. I'm hoping that you join us and so that the cyber ops course can ignite your passion for cybersecurity. We have a fantastic time. So it's a great course. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce the instructor for ethical hacking who will be teaching on Mondays and Wednesdays, Chuck DeCastro. Chuck, is he here? I think Chuck has a uh, emergency, so. Uh-oh. Well, yeah. I hope everything is okay with Chuck. So. Yeah. I so we will move along to computer hacking and forensic investigator on Tuesdays and Thursdays with John Lorenz. Hello, thank you. Um, so I, I just wanna say, uh, you know, thanks to everyone in the military. Um, I'm, I'm a, a, in law enforcement um, and, and there's a lot of uh, room for growth um, coming out of the military into jobs. I, I was reading some of the uh, questions in the chats about um, job placement and stuff like that. Um, I was not in the military uh, and I was able to get in uh, uh, without having a forensics background. And I'm going to uh, be able to share my experience and my knowledge with you guys so you guys could be more prepared and on into going into the workforce. All right, thank you very much, John. Uh, would any, does anybody have anything that they'd like to add before we move on to the next? Yeah, um, and I don't know, as, as of today, that actually the Saturday, Sunday cyber ops was canceled. So I know you um, introduced Joe, um, but those students were notified today that the Saturday, Sunday cyber ops was, was canceled. So only the Tuesday, Thursday is available now. My apologies. It's okay. It was just decided today. So it was probably overlooked. And I don't even know if they let Joe know yet. So Good news for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to add or have any specific questions maybe for one of the instructors before we move on to the next section? We have a couple of minutes. Um, I was just oh, going to respond. Oh. Go ahead, John. I was just going to respond to uh, David. Uh, I work for the Munster Police Department. I've been in um, forensics for about six years. I am not, I'm an analyst. I'm not a, um, uh, uh, an officer. And I've, um, I've been uh, working in networking and computers and stuff like that uh, for about 10 years prior to that. Uh, so All right, did thank Bill you. Get, did Bill yes. get a chance to introduce himself? Bill is going to introduce himself now. He just he just uh, made he it, so right now. go ahead, Bill. Hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? It's usually not a problem for me, I've noticed, but I've been an educator for coming up on 20 years now, and I have been interested in Linux since I was in a Microsoft network chat room, and somebody had an extended discussion with me about this thing called Linux. That was 1995. So I've got a long history with Linux, but my 
passion is really in teaching it as a found at a foundational level because I really feel that most people who disagree with Linux or don't think it fits or whatever, simply don't understand and didn't get introduced to it. And as I just mentioned, my introduction to it was a little unconventional. Fortunately, I had a Linux geek coming into a Microsoft network uh, chat room and effectively hand holding my way through it. And I installed Linux for the first time without even realizing what it was. And ever since then, it's been a passion I've had to try and make it accessible to people who otherwise don't see it as accessible. So that's where my focus is within the program right now. I've just gone through my first eight weeks and it's been an experience, but I look forward to the next one and the one after that. I think uh, what we're doing here is unique, special, gives you an opportunity to do something you may not otherwise get to do and fantastic. This has been a fantastic experience for me so far, and I, I look forward to this next iter next iteration coming up soon. Anything right. else anybody else would like to know? I could give you all the CV particulars if you wish, but I like to speak about what my passion is as an educator more than what my bona fides are, as they say. <laughs> Honey had her hand up earlier. And I saw a high bill. Thank you, honey. What source are you using for Linux study? Well, when I did my Linux Plus, I went with the CompTIA material directly. But keep in mind, I kind of put off getting the Linux Plus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for a long time and needed to get into it, if you will, in a short period of time. So when it comes to test prep, I went for the Linux Plus certification because I wanted something that was vendor neutral and that was my focus and that was also my school's focus. And so when I was developing the course for Ivy Tech, um, I had to be certified and they hired me before they realized I hadn't been certified yet because I was always the Linux guy. And so in a two week period, I had to get it. So when it came down to that, and this is my attitude towards certification, you train for certification, but you have got to educate yourself prior to that. And that's the key. You come from an academic base, but when it comes down to certification itself, your focus should be as close to the tool that you want to use. And that's why I support the Red Hat initiative here, because I never got a chance to teach Red Hat. 20 years ago, I tried to introduce it into my school when I was there for like my first year, and it just didn't happen. And here I am 20 years later teaching, and I'm just now getting to teach with this material. And I've had some hiccups along the way, but all in all, my experience this past eight weeks has convinced me this is the right material to use. We just need to focus it a little bit more. That's where I come in. Yeah, and if, I'll add a couple things onto that, Bill. That, that's perfect. Uh, Red Hat also has opportunities for employment. Um, that was one of our big factors on it is that um, they want to hire hundreds of interns as well as direct hires for Red Hat themselves, not just their, their channel partners throughout the nation. Um, so there's that need, and they've been a fantastic partner. Uh, nothing against Ubuntu and the other flavors of Linux, uh, but if you've got Red Hat Linux down, you're going to be just fine with all the others. And so well, you, have, you have the choice after you complete the Red Hat. Our courses are focused on Red Hat system admin. Uh, you have the choice after this course to prepare for the certification for Linux Plus or Red Hat system admin, and, and we'll give you additional materials for that. Let me build on that a little bit, just to one thing what Matt was, Matthew was saying there, and that is Red Hat is the only hey, Linux distribution that is dedicated to enterprise level service and support. You don't sell Linux. You don't buy Linux. You buy the support for it if you ever purchase it at all. And that's been Red Hat's focus since the inception. And Red Hat is one of the key granddaddy Linuxes of the one of some of the first distributions on earth. So they've got the lineage, they've got the expertise, and since they've been bought by IBM, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. It's a very important skill to have. Thanks, Bill. Honey, did you have a question? I saw that you had your hand up. Uh, yes. Um, so a lot of times uh, the uh, I've seen in the IT and cyber world, uh, people tend to kind of get confused with what position does what. And I know the ultimate goal of this program is, is uh, an, uh, you know, uh, an employment, steady employment. The um, what we go over as far as, uh, you know, positions that different positions, 
kind of fall under those uh, these programs. So for, like in my case is the AI. So AI is, you know, covering typically these areas uh, or these positions uh, mainly like, you know, kind of in the data science world and all those things versus the system administrator that are mo more of a hands-on operation and, you know, some analysis type stuff. So, and that's something um, I haven't, um, I haven't seen any kind of a documentation where it kind of shows a branch off and kind of almost like a, as if you were to do a handoff um, from si simply from system design installer to operator to uh, forensics, uh, the uh, analysis, you know, those kind of things to where that you could actually differentiate between the position because everybody's like, so, oh, I'm a cyber person, but what, what do you, what sure. does that mean? So honey, th th those are great questions. And Rami Salahea is going to cover that at the end uh, of this orientation, but you've done a great intro. So thank you for that. <laughs> That's, uh, those are great questions on AI, uh, just briefly that. You, mu you muted yourself, Matthew. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So that was a great lead in uh, on that. Rami Salahaya will be talking about that towards the end of this orientation. Uh, as far as AI, uh, I could talk about that more, but that's that's a new area. These are skill sets that specifically the National Centers for Academic Excellence uh, in support from the National Security Agency is asking for these skill sets. Other courses that we might have later on uh, are like quantum computing. And we're trying to figure out a way that we can teach that in a practical way. There's not necessarily a certification for that. Just like when we started developing uh, the application to develop the pilot program almost what, a year and a half ago. Uh, there really weren't AI certifications at that time. There's been a few out there. Um, so we don't have an AI certification that's tied directly in, but we have a machine learning certification. Uh, there are some others that we've been looking at, uh, but again, we'll talk more about that towards the end of the program. Great, great questions. All right. Anything else? Anybody have anything, any other questions before we move on? All right, so I think we're gonna move along with Chris to Chrissy, where she's going to discuss Ivy Learn and My Ivy account and how to access Zoom, if you don't know. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yep. All right, I'm back. Um, so this is probably one of the biggest questions we always get from students is, how do I access my courses? How do I even start this? I don't know what to do. So this is exactly the part that you need uh, to be paying attention to. Again, this is going to be recorded so that you could even watch it later. Um, so let me um, pull up. I am going to share my screen with you here again. Give me one moment. Okay, so um, tonight we are going to discuss two big pieces, um, and actually let me turn my screen off because you don't need to, my video, okay, because um, you don't need to be seeing me since you we've got the um, uh, screen shared. So we're going to discuss two big pieces of technology that you will be using as a participant in this program. You have actually already used both of them when you went through your application process, um, because this is where you did the assessments. But I'm going to talk uh, more closely on how they relate to your participation in the courses. So. Um, while this program is made up of a consortium of four universities, as I mentioned, the Ivy Tech system is actually what we're using uh, to complete the program. So tonight we're going to be looking at My Ivy, which is your student portal. This is how you check email. This is how you can get to Ivy Learn. Um, and this is just where you can find your general student information. That's My Ivy. And then you have Ivy Learn, which is actually how you will access your courses for your virtual lectures, how you will access your modules, um, and then how you will access and get the links for some of the other programs that you might be using, uh, like NetLab, NetAcad, those kinds of things. Um, but Ivy Learn is also how you'll get your syllabus, those kinds of things. 
test. So there are several different ways to get to my Ivy and Ivy Learn. Um, the first is through the main Ivy Tech website, which is just www.ivytech.edu, um, which is what I'm on right now. In the type top right hand corner, you can see, and I can actually make this even bigger, um, in the type right hand corner, you can actually see two links. One is here for My Ivy, and one is for Ivy Learn. So that is one way you can get to them. Um, the other way is by going into My Ivy, um, and that's just going to be my.ivytech.edu. And um, that is going it automatically logged me in, but there'll be a login button. And then um, you would log in using your Ivy Tech uh, email address that you were provided and the password that you set up. Um, so I just recommend you bookmark the My Ivy page, because again, that's then how you can also get into Ivy Learn. Um, so when you log into your Ivy, my Ivy account, make sure you're using your Ivy Tech email address, not your personal email address, or else it's going to give you an error. Ivy Tech does not keep record of your password. So if you've forgotten your password, you'll need to click on the reset or forgot password link um, on the main login page. If you completed um, well, you all don't have to worry about this. You've all probably completed your assessments where it looked like this. Um, at some point, they changed the way our My Ivy account looked. Um, so those who were in our, our pilot session and our regular session one, they started when this looked much different. But so there are two big pieces you will want to become familiar with within My Ivy. So I'm in My Ivy right now. And that is going to be um, sorry, there's, there's two big pieces and a lot of these other links are not going to be applicable to you as a part of this program since we are a non-credit program. For example, if you click on a link that says my schedule, it is not going to show you your my schedule because the non-credit links don't show up in those. I had several people ask um, that they have not gotten confirmation yet of their registration. And I put it in the chat a couple of times. Your confirmation of your registration should be to you by the end of this week. So please keep an eye in your Ivy Tech emails for those. We really need to be using only the Ivy Tech emails for this program program due to student privacy laws. Um, we cannot share, really share your educational record. Um, we have to make sure it's you getting the information. So please be using your Ivy Tech email and checking that on a regular basis. So the two big pieces you'll want to know are how to access Ivy Learn. Again, that's how you're going to do your classes and your student email. Um, as a participant, um, both of these should be listed in your quick link section, which is this section right here. They are not shown in mine since I am a staff member, but they should be in your quick links here. Um, it'll say student email and it will say Ivy Learn. Um, if they are not there, you can add them by going to see all. And then, so if you go into see all, You can search, so I'm gonna search student email and it's called oops, student email. And you'll see it pop up and you can favor it and add it to your favorites by clicking on the little heart right there. Um, and then that will bring it up in your my favorites portion right here. But again, they should be in your quick links um, as a participant. Your student email, and then again, Ivy Learn. Oops, I don't know what I just clicked on. Sorry about that. Ivy Learn is the other one. That's how you're going to be doing your coursework. So again, your student email should be the email you're using to communicate for this program. This is how you should send emails to us, and this is how we will usually send emails to you at this point. So make sure you're checking it regularly. Um, the Ivy Tech email is run through Gmail. So what happens when you have a personal Gmail account, let's say that's the email you signed up with, when you click on the student email link, if you have your personal 
Gmail account uh, password saved, it might take you to your personal email because that's the, the um, email that you have saved. What you will need to do is you'll either need to log out of your personal Gmail account so that you could then log in using your Ivy Tech information. Or what I really recommend is just adding an account in your Gmail. What that will allow you to do is readily be able to access both your personal Gmail account and your Ivy Tech email account at the same time by just flipping between the two accounts. You can easily Google how to add an account um, in your Gmail if you don't know how to do that. I'm not gonna go over that because it's gonna depend on um, what platform you're using, all of that, but just Google adding account in, in Gmail and you'll essentially just use your Ivy Tech email as the username and your uh, Ivy Tech password as the password. Now, um, that's the important piece about your Ivy Tech email. Again, please make sure that is the one you are checking and the one you are using. Now, the big piece I know you've all been waiting for is how exactly do you complete your courses? How do you complete these virtual courses? How do you watch it on Zoom? How do you go back and look at the recording? So that's what I'm going to go over now. These will all be in Ivy Learn. So if you are already in um, your Ivy Tech account, again, Ivy Learn should be under your quick links. It is not for me because I'm a staff member, but it is here on my favorite. So when you go into Ivy Learn, um, this is what it looks like, okay? So you, um, and then, or again, you can, um, just favorite the Ivy Learn. It's just ivylearn.ivytech.edu. You can always favorite that um, to just go directly to it. You can get to it from the, mine, the main Ivy Tech website. You will notice on the left-hand side here, again, let me make this bigger. There is a box here in the menu that says inbox, okay? This is not the same thing as your student email. Okay, this is how you can directly communicate with your instructors. So if you go into your inbox, um, you can send, like if I were to create a new, you can select a course that you're a part of, um, and that will then send, um, you can then send uh, messages to your classmates, you can send messages to your instructor, those kinds of things. Um, so you can select a course and then choose the instructor. And you'll only be able to communicate to those associated with the course. So like if you want to send an email to your program manager, you can't do that through the inbox. You have to do that through your Ivy Tech email. Um, so just don't get confused thinking, oh, I'm going to go in here and check my email. That is not your email. Um, that's just a direct communication tie with specifically your classes. Now, if an instructor sends you an, a, a message through this inbox through Ivy Learn, you will also get a, a message in your Ivy Tech email. Just make sure you're checking that Ivy Tech email on a regular basis. But I just want to um, reiterate the inbox in Ivy Learn is not the same thing as your Ivy Tech email. Okay. Uh, you're in, yes. I'm sorry. This is Valerie. Yes. I believe they still have to go into their account and ask for those messages to be forwarded to their email. Uh, I actually Unless think you're that right. Has changed. Yeah. I believe you are right that um, I believe it is in, in your settings in Ivy Learn. If you want it's in the your profile, your account, yeah, there, if you right want to up show here. them that. Yeah, account. If you go into your account, it's probably what, under notifications? Yes. Maybe. Um, go down to. Yeah, like so you can. You want to know about announcements and emails. Right so, right. so you can set any notifications from Ivy Learn. Um, you can get sent to your. Um, right yeah, groups, yeah. So, I would also pay attention to that right hand column where, if those of you who use mobile devices more, please turn those notifications on. Mm -hmm. That yeah. can be very helpful to you once you've set up that ability through your phone. That is correct. So, yeah, so you can go into your account and set up your notification settings, whether the stuff gets sent to the email, whether it gets sent, um, you know, as a push notification to your to your phone. Um, you can do all that through the Ivy Learn. Thank you uh, both for that. 
Um, so let me remember where I am here. Okay, so your courses will be listed here in the courses um, menu button, okay? Now I have a lot of stuff in there because I'm a staff member, I have access to a lot of stuff, but your course um, will be listed here in your published courses. Now, a really important thing to note is the courses may not appear in Ivy Learn until two days before your class is scheduled to start. So if you're in a Monday, Wednesday class, the classes may not even pop up here until Saturday. If you're in a Tuesday, Thursday class, it may not even pop up till Sunday. If you're in the Saturday, Sunday class, it might not even pop up until the Thursday before that. Um, it, it, they usually go live two days before the class is scheduled to start, okay? Even if you see the class go live, the instructor may not have it all ready to go yet. So it may be missing information in the syllabus. It may be the modules may not all be published yet. The instructor themselves may not have published the content. So let's say it is in there Saturday and you go in and, oh, my syllabus isn't in there. Be patient. Your class doesn't start until Monday. The instructor might not have the information in there until Monday. Um, so if you try to go in there now and be like, I'm going to go in and look at my classes. They're not in there yet. You have to wait at least until two days before they start. Typically is when they will go live. Um, so that's just really important to remember. So I am going to use one of my past courses and as an example to show you what the course will actually look like once you go in. Um, I actually have to go in. Um, let me find it, here it is, okay. So this is a four credit class I took um, through Ivy Tech. So um, yours might look a little bit different, but the, the same basic, um, the, the menus are all the same. Um, and especially I'm going to show you how to access Zoom. So this is actually a Linux class I took through Ivy Tech. Um, so again, it will just be listed in courses. You click on it and it will go into the class. You all will have these links here on the left, those will all be very similar, um, if not the exact same as what you will see. Um, there's going to be announcements, there's going to be a syllabus, um, the modules will be listed, um, those, those kinds of things. Um, so you need to make sure you're reading your class announcements, which the recent announcements will be on the main home page, but there's also an announcement uh, link here. Um, you'll want to carefully read the syllabus when it's posted and, and all ready to go, because uh, that's going to give you a lot of information you need to know about the class, the attendance policy, the instructor's contact information, um, those kinds of things. The modules um, is where you would go to do your coursework for your course. Um, so if I go in here to modules, um, you know, again, might be slightly different depending on the class because a lot of the work you're going to do in uh, possibly NetAcad, NetLab, some of those outside programs, but essentially it will typically give you um, like learning material, possibly PowerPoints, and then it will um, let you know what you need to do as far as your assignments for those weeks. Um, so that would be under modules, as well as there should be a calendar of, of when things um, are due. Um, and then your grades uh, may be here and now there, because we do some do use some of these other um, programs, some of your grades may be listed in those programs, such as the NetAcad, NetLab. Um, I believe most of them, well, I um, they may transfer then and be posted in Ivy Learn. I'm not sh exactly sure how that piece works, but um, your grades um, might be posted here. They be, may be posted in some of those other programs. So, uh, Christy, for yes, can you point, answer that? Yes. Yeah, because there's a lot of people who will get confused on that area. Um, in your initial courses, the, the grade work is actually done through Python or if you're in the A plus course, that work all, uh, all the grades just go NetAcad. Uh, so you will not see them in Ivy Learn. You'll see an introduction in Ivy Learn uh, that will tell you where to go in NetAcad. And your instructor 
will also show that. The only thing that you'll have really in Ivy Learn for those courses are, uh, well, the syllabus and the Zoom sessions. So you can know when to contest uh, Zoom sessions. For those that are in the Linux course, you'll be using this course uh, for your grades and quizzes and stuff. Just like you will for A plus, and that would actually run the lab and tells us if you were physically there. But the, uh, the coursework for the Linux course will be through I, through here, right? So that's those are the three courses. I don't think we have anybody taking any other courses in this first term, correct? Just those three. Um, some, let me see, we'd have A plus Linux, Python. We do have some cyber ops uh, for those. Um, oh, okay, for those who, that already have who may already have A plus. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're in cyber ops, that's also done in Cisco Netacad. Um, there's nothing in Ivy Learn that you'll be doing other than, like I mentioned, the Zoom sessions at the uh, uh, the syllabus. You'll see that information. Uh, if you show, if you already had A plus, you were choosing Security Plus. That work is inside of Ivy Learn. So several of our courses are through the Cisco Netacad system. Those you'll see that right at the top of the point you right over to it, and your instructor will help give you more guidance on that. Right, and I'm not sure, I, Matthew. You were kind of breaking up for me. I'm not sure that, that was on your end or my end, so I'm just going to repeat it. Um, so the the coursework then will vary based on the course you guys may be taking. So your instructor will give you the information you need as to where you need to be doing your coursework, whether it's actually in Ivy Learn or or some of those other programs. So, but all that you know, if if you you will be redirected to those other programs here in Ivy Learn um, if if need be. Um, so the big piece that you need to know uh, for your virtual classes is how do you access not only only the live lectures via Zoom, but also the recorded Zoom lectures in case you cannot make it to the designated day and time, um, or maybe you want to rewatch a lecture um, for some reason. Um, it's really, really easy to get to. You go into the class and you simply, here on the left, click on the Zoom link. Um, so if I click on that, there will be three tabs. There will be an upcoming meeting tab, a previous meetings tab and a cloud recordings tab. Now, this is a class I took in the past. So obviously there are no upcoming meetings, but you guys will have a whole list of the upcoming meetings. Um, you would pick the day and the time of, of, of the appropriate day and time and you click on it and it'll take you into the Zoom meeting. Um, here under the previous meetings tab, that's where you can see all of the previous meetings. Like you can't watch um, the live virtual lecture. I need to go back in and, and watch, you know, let's say I need to go back in and watch my lecture from December 16th. Um, all you do is go in, find the one that you need to watch, and then you just click on recording details and that will open up uh, the recorded um, uh, lecture. Um, same thing here under the, the cloud recordings, this will take you to the, the cloud recording. Um, and that's how you will access not only the upcoming meetings, but the, uh, the previous um, and cloud recorded meetings. So it's all here by simply clicking the Zoom uh, button. Um, so on your first day, if there don't appear to be any upcoming meetings listed, uh, please check your announcements tab as the instructor may have put the link there. Um, check your syllabus, they may have put it there, um, but hopefully they have those listed there. Um, I do know this last time, the instructors also emailed the first link for that first class out. Um, so if it's not there, check some of those other avenues um, as it may have been sent there until they get it, um, get those meetings in this list. Um, but that's how you need to attend your classes by clicking on the Zoom link or again by check, clicking those recordings. Um, and just remember that you can go back in and watch the recorded lecture if you miss any of the um, lectures. Another thing, Ivy Learn is powered by a company called Canvas. There is a Canvas app that you can download on your phone. Um, now, not great for doing the assignments, doing the work, 
but it's great, as we mentioned, with the push notifications too. It's great for checking your syllabus really quick, um, for maybe checking that inbox if there's uh, messages through um, Canvas, checking the calendar to see what might be due, um, those kinds of things. So um, when you click, when you, when you download Canvas, um, it'll ask you for your school's information. You just use the Ivy Tech information, your Ivy Tech uh, email address, um, those kinds of things to get that set up. So it's a really nice tool to, to have quickly to access um, everything. Um, so that is all I have for Ivy Learn and my Ivy. Um, one of your best bets is just to go in and, and play with it. You're really not going to be able to mess anything up within my Ivy or even Ivy Learn. Uh, there may not be much for you um, to explore in Ivy Learn until your classes become live, but there are some resources down here under the resources tab that you can go in and look at um, and, and, and just see how it, how it works. Um, but once that class becomes live, it's really good, you know, go in there click around on the different links, um, those kinds of things. Um, so I was there anything? Uh, it looks like most of the chat was about um, most of the chat was about certifications yeah. and yeah, uh, so okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. So I'll go ahead and stop. Yeah, sharing. there's sort of yeah, certification yeah. stuff, and everybody starts with Ivy Learn, yep. no matter what course, right? Yep. Ivy Learn is where you start. You should get an email, but sometimes, depending upon how different systems work, you may not get an email. So check yep. your course like yep. a day before, certainly the day before classes start, within 24 hours of it starting, you should be able to get into it. Yep. Uh, yep. If you're not able to see that, let us know. No. And, and just remember that, like, let's say your class starts on a, a well, especially these 6 p.m. classes, we as program managers are probably not going to be in the office uh, when, when you have your class. So if you send us an email, I can't get into my class, we're probably not going to be able to respond until the next day. Your best bet is to send an email to your instructor, um, either through that inbox or again, their syllabus should be live and they should have um, their uh, an email address in there. Because um, a lot of those those weekday classes are at 6 p.m. Central, um, you know, and we may be out of the office. So um, if you don't get a response when you email to say, I can't get into my class, you may just have to wait until the next day and watch the recording um, at a later time. And speaking yeah, as a Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, Sunday instructor. <laughs> yeah, but that too. That too. I would check. I would check in on a Friday or a Thursday before that first Saturday or Sunday, please. Yep. <laughs> just <Yep>. make sure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bill. That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. I'm done with my part, Mike. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Chrissy. So that's a lot of information. This will be posted online and I will mark where Chrissy starts talking about Ivy Learn in the, in the description on YouTube. So it'll be easier for everyone to find that, all right? So next we are going to talk about the overview of the tracks and the certifications with the uh, primary investigators and first up, we have Dr. Michael Tu, who is going to be discussing the forensics path. Dr. Tu? If I, if hey, I may, man. before we go into that, I know he's going to start on that. But um, sure. are we going to break out the faculty into a separate room? Yes. Is that still happening? So, yeah, Michael, can you? Sure. Yep, so Matthew is going to talk uh, to the uh, Okay. Hey, thank you. So good evening. Good evening, everyone. Okay, my name is Michael Tu. I'm a professor uh, from Purdue University Northwest, and I'm also directing this uh, CWCT training program. So I think uh, uh, my colleagues have already uh, gave a really good uh, introduction about this program, and uh, the the especially the uh, I will learn learning environment, right? So make sure that that's the starting point of uh, your training course. And make sure to check your email for you know the first day, uh, you know Zoom meeting, right? Because we you know, we meet uh, online. Okay, so um, 
I would like to talk, spend a few minutes talking about this uh, specific track, and then my colleagues will talk about other tracks. So I will talk about the forensic track, and the forensic track will have uh, you know six cores. Okay, so they will have three uh, core cores, which will be shared by all the three uh, training programs, uh, training tracks. So, uh, for example, the A plus course, which is talking about the computer system essentials, right? And uh, then we have a security plus course, which will introduce the overall about you know cyber security, security management, knowledge, and basic skills. And uh, the Cisco cyber ops will focus on the network portion, you know, networks and network uh, security. So we think this will build a pretty good uh, IT foundation and the cyber security foundation for all. Uh, for the three tracks. So for uh, forensics, we have three. Uh, we have three, uh, you know, um, track specific course. Uh, one is the Linux system administration. I think our, our colleagues have already talked about the importance of Linux, right? So you will, if you take this course, you will enjoy, you know, the talk with our instructors. And uh, the for computer forensics, which uh, will uh, mainly focus on the uh, Windows forensics and, uh, you know, some other like uh, basic about the forensic investigation and uh, maybe, you know, decryption things. While the computer hacking and the forensic investigator course will uh, focus on the uh, foundations of the uh, forensic, like forensic investigation procedures, uh, law and regulations, and uh, basic about the uh, file systems, and uh, investigation uh, tools, okay, investigation tools. So that's the, the six course. So we do uh, give a, a sample session by session plan of study. Uh, we're talking about, you know, um, the maximum course you should take is like two course per se uh, two session, but you know, you can take one course per session and uh, or you may take a break, right? Who knows, right? And if, you know, you schedule a lot, you may talk to program manager to like request, okay, I would like to take like maybe a, a third course, but that's most likely we would recommend you guys take one or at most two course because of our heavy uh, load of the course, okay? So um, I'd say, you know, one of our participants talking about, you know, it's glad that this course are not uh, just like boot camps, right? So we want to build the foundation, the skills, the practical skills, and, you know, also prepare you guys to pass the certification. So we have the uh, course and we also have the resource for you guys to pass those certification like you certify. So you will be uh, contacted by us after you complete this course, uh, successfully pass the course. Okay, so uh, for our session one, uh, for example, you know, for, for, for our uh, phase one course, so we have like, um, you know, the A pass, right? We suggest you take A pass first. Of course, that's the first course for everybody. And then uh, we would also suggest you take an Linux system course if you have, you know, your schedule a lot, okay? So after that, you may want to take the uh, CHFI. So uh, our number is 255, but actually it will be uh, taken before the 235 course, okay? So, and then at the same time, you should take one of the security course. Um, we recommend you take the uh, cyber ops because it have networks and also network security. So you can take those course um, in parallel, right? Yeah, in parallel. So you you know, um, okay. And um, then the session three, uh, you can take uh, the forensic course, or you can take you know security class, right? Se security plus. So, um, but this is just a sample. You can take the course based on whether you pass certain uh, pass all the prerequisite, right? You schedule a lot. So I think that's uh, pretty much what I would like to uh, introduce about this forensic track. Um, do you have any questions? I know there are like some questions in the chat, right? Okay. Yeah, they're all they're all not about, different okay. stuff. You're good. Okay, great. So we do have uh, before I leave, uh, we do have one option course which is a mobile forensic course. Okay, so that one we want you know it's not in your plan of study. But it will be optional uh, after probably after the summer uh, 2022. Okay, 2022 we may offer that course depends on the uh, interest, right? If we have like more than 30 students would like to take that course, we may offer uh, that mobile forensic course. Okay, thank you. Um, next will be uh, yeah, Michael. 
do you want to take? Sure, sorry about that. Uh, next up, we are going to be talking to Dr. Xi from University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and he is going to be discussing uh, systems administrations. It took me a second, sorry about that. No problem. Hi, um, thank you, Michael, for introduction. Um, uh, this is Meng Jinxie uh, from University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. And I'm an associate professor in the computer science and engineering department. Um, I'm also an, um, the acting director for the UTC InfoSec Center, uh, which is a national uh, CAE, uh, Center of Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense. Um, so um, we, we partner with uh, the Purdue Northwest, as well as Ivy Tech and UNC Charlotte, uh, to provide this uh, training course. And so, um, as Dr. Tu um, already mentioned that, we have um, three uh, tracks. And uh, here I will uh, give you a brief idea of um, the system administration track. So let me try to share this uh, screen. And um, this is basically the same uh, website uh, that uh, Dr. Tu just uh, shared, uh, but um, I'm, uh, yeah, let me, here on the left, you can see, uh, on the right, you can see that we have this, uh, the different uh, three different tracks and uh, he just uh, talked about the digital forensics. So uh, here I uh, briefly uh, give an overview of their system administration um, the track or path. So uh, we have three different tracks, but um, each track offers six courses, but all three core, uh, all three tracks actually share three core courses as um, mentioned by Dr. Tu. So um, as you can see that um, the core uh, are the same. So CompTIA A+, CompTIA Security+, and Cisco Cyber Ops. And um, then after you have this um, uh, foundational courses being taken, uh, and if you want to move on to a system administration track, then essentially uh, you uh, can choose the following three. Uh, essentially, you have to take the following three. The first is Linux system administration, uh, which actually uh, can also be used for the forensics, uh, forensics track. And then, uh, the other two are kind of uh, unique to this track. Um, one is ethical hacking, and the other is cloud system administration. So for Linux system administration, basically we are using uh, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat um, I think they're 8.2 at this time um, uh, to deliver their, the content, the lectures. So, um, and also we are using their uh, hands-on labs uh, for practice. Um, so far, we have offered uh, Linux system administration um, uh, twice uh, in session one and actually three. Yeah, uh, this is a uh, third time. So we offered first time in the pilot session as well as in session one. So in session two, we have uh, three, uh, we have three uh, offerings. Okay, and then uh, I believe we also, um, in their uh, session two, we offer the ethical hacking. So ethical hacking, uh, essentially, uh, you, you can get more uh, detailed information in the course uh, kind of uh, catalog description. So it's more focusing on their, uh, on their, um, their uh, defense techniques and uh, offense uh, techniques. So commonly used in their, uh, uh, in the cyber defense or cyber attack. So give you some, um, the overview of those uh, basic uh, approaches and uh, um, the tools you can use for to, uh, to essentially launch an attack and defend an attack, uh, cyber attack. Um, so we are basically uh, using the content from the EC Council. Um, so it means that after you taking this course and uh, do the um, do those labs? You should be uh, equipped well for taking their um, EC Council uh, corresponding certif certification exam. And uh, the last one is a cloud system administration. So here we are basically uh, focusing on their an 
an open stack, an, um, an open free uh, cloud system. So we are also will be using the Linux and OpenStack uh, labs to uh, provide the practices. Um, so you will be having an opportunity to practice uh, on the Linux uh, practice platform. And we also will be uh, touching on um, some uh, Windows Server administration, but not a lot. Uh, so most of them are actually focusing on their uh, OpenStack. We also will uh, talk a little bit about um, other cloud systems, um, so as well as uh, uh, Windows Server administration. So you can see that um, uh, here uh, is the kind of the sample uh, study plan. So we assume that if you guys are taking two courses uh, per session, then you can complete all six courses uh, in three sessions. Um, but as Dr. Tu mentioned that um, it's, it's just a sample plan. So if you, based on your own um, uh, situation, you can take one or two courses. And sometimes, um, yeah, we have seen people that initially uh, uh, did have some pretty ambitious plan, but later realize that, that actually there are quite a lot of work uh, to really master the content. So they decided just to take one at a time. So that's, that's a perfect fine. Um, but from this um, study plan, you can see that uh, we expect you to um, complete the CompTIA A plus and Linux system administration uh, before you uh, take uh, any further uh, courses. So um, that's actually uh, what's, uh, what has happened uh, for many uh, students. So we have quite a lot of, uh, a large, relatively large enrollment for Linux, Linux system administration. Um, so that because that can be used for both, uh, for both forensic tracks as well as the, um, this system administration track. And um, we want you to, uh, yeah, also um, uh, start the, after you uh, take that system administration track, I mean, course, then uh, we would like you to uh, take the Cisco cyber ops uh, before you move on to uh, the other two. Um, the cloud system administration and ethical hacking. So um, we, we feel that that's probably uh, suit you uh, or your study best. And uh, let me see. You can see that corresponding to those courses, uh, we have the uh, certification, um, what certification uh, you might consider. Um, so for the uh, Linux system administration, uh, the most matching one would be the Red Hat certif Certified System Administrator. But you can also consider CompTIA Linux Plus. Uh, but you need to be aware um, there, are, there are differences uh, between these two uh, certification exams uh, because uh, based on their previous uh, instructor, um, their, uh, their focus, uh, uh, there are some differences in their uh, focus uh, in the exam. Uh, for example, Red Hat uh, focuses more on the practices, but uh, CompTIA Linux class seems more on the concepts level. And um, for their, um, um, their uh, EC ethical hacking, you can, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that you can take the EC Council CH exam. They, they match pretty well. Um, for the cloud system administration, frankly, this is a new course, um, uh, still end development. Uh, so there is no uh, target uh, exam or certification exam, uh, but I believe it will uh, it will lay a good foundation later on. Uh, for for example, the Red Hat has, I believe they have their own uh, certification for their OpenStack. Uh, so maybe I mean if you're interested, you can look at you can look for that uh, uh, certification. Um, so that's uh, pretty much what I want to uh, touch base uh, with this track. So do you have any questions? Uh, there are none in the chat, so. And if anybody has questions that don't get answered or you think of later, um, you know, you can always contact your, your program manager and, and we can get your questions answered. But yeah, that doesn't look, um, oh, there is a question, sorry. Uh, there is a question. Uh, so the, the Linux class, 
Uh, will the course adequately prepare us for both or is it focused towards one or the other? Uh, the Linux class is geared more towards Red Hat, um, but if you are uh, doing well in Red Hat, it will prepare you for the others. Yeah, you probably just need to take some, um, some extra uh, practices just to gear toward the Linux Plus, but the foundation will be the same. And All then right. the, oh, sorry, the, one more question. How close will the cloud course be to the cloud plus exam material from CompTIA? Uh, that's a great question. Unfortunately, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I cannot give you the answer because I'm, I haven't checked their cloud plus exam. That's, um, uh, that's also new to me. Yeah. I see that. Um, a Red Hat is not Debian. No, it's not. It's a separate. It's a. It's kind of the totally different uh, branch. Um, the um, Chrissy is uh, um, a question about uh, had uh, the uh, the person already have their sec security yeah, trust. Yeah. If um, <laughs> this goes back to if you already have a certification. Um, you do not have to take that class. So if you already have Security Plus, you do not have to take Security Plus. Um, usually what happens then is we just continue you on in your particular track of study. So you would take, um, you know, maybe you would take Cisco Cyber Ops. And so it, it all depends. There may not be another class being offered that you've met the prereqs for. So for example, like CEH, you have to have both Cisco Cyber Ops and Security Plus. So if you have the Security Plus, great. But if you're still working on Cyber Ops and you take it, you may only be able to take Cyber Ops at that time. So it's really just going to depend, um, you know, on for every semester, you all will get contacted by the program advisor, Amber, and she will tell you what you're eligible for and what you are not eligible for. Um, much like this time, hey, you're eligible for A plus and Linux. Here are the course forms. So, um, so it's really going to depend. Um, sometimes, again, it goes back to if there is room available, it maybe you you do only have the ability to take one course because you don't meet the prereqs for another. Okay, maybe there's a course available outside of your track and it goes back to if there is room in that class, you might be able to take it. So um, that's all going to, to vary. Okay, thank you, Chrissy. We need to move on. And last but not least, we're gonna introduce Dr. Saqib, who is going to be talking a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for sticking out uh, till this long. Um, so I am going to talk about the last uh, training track that is cybersecurity artificial intelligence. In this pro, uh, in this track, uh, similar to what Dr. Tu and Dr. Chi has explained, uh, we have three core courses. Um, and as you have uh, seen the three courses, uh, A+, plus, Security+, plus, and Cyber Ops, they are the core courses for, the, for all the tracks. Um, so the same goes for, um, for the AI track, that these courses are the common courses, which initially you have to take them in the first uh, set of sessions. And then afterwards, you can take the, the, uh, the specialized courses, which uh, for the AI pro, uh, track are Python essentials, uh, AI or machine learning in cybersecurity, and IoT and hardware security. Um, I do know that the AI and IoT uh, are, um, will be offered in spring in the January session of 2022. So you can plan uh, maybe this term, if you are taking AI track, you can take one or two uh, courses from the uh, required core courses. And then you can plan for spring, you may take one or two of the um, uh, courses such as uh, AI and IoT hardware security. In October, Python Essentials will also be offered. Uh, so before I uh, share with you some you know, plan of study and share an, a sample, I would um, briefly talk about the three courses which uh, you, may, uh, uh, you will be required to take when you are in AI track. The first one is Python Essentials. It's, it's, it is more on introducing you how to code. 
um, describing you the structures, um, link list, arrays, um, how to process data, and it's an interpreted language. How is it different from C and C++? So these uh, the core concepts will be introduced in Python. Um, they will be the Python will eventually be used for other courses that is AI and IoT uh, IoT security. So if you plan to take um, these courses in January, then I highly recommend that you uh, plan to take Python Essentials in October session. So this is a fundamental course. You would also learn how to apply Python in cybersecurity. So th there will be um, modules that will be covered briefly in Python Essentials. But the focus of this course is mainly to, to introduce you with Python and make you comfortable how to code, what is the development environment. Um, you download uh, different uh, IDEs, code, synthesize, and you execute uh, and or you run your programs. And once you have that skill, you may, will be applying it uh, in machine learning, for example, NumPy and some uh, libraries are available in Python that you may directly use in uh, courses like uh, AI and ML, uh, that is 245. So in AI, and, uh, which is artificial intelligence and ML, which is machine learning and cybersecurity, you will learn uh, these two uh, uh, really state of art technology, which is up and coming. Uh, if you're already working in the IT sector, you already know that how everything is, is um, transformed by the concepts of machine learning, neural networks, and artificial intelligence. So in this course, you will learn the different categories of artificial intelligence, such as supervised learning, unsupervised learning, classification, regression, etc. So you will be familiar with the, those new concepts, ideas, along with applying them using Python libraries. There is also plan for using Azure, um, but definitely once you join the program, the instructor will tell you how the course will be uh, uh, will be conducted. So this course will be offered in January session. If you plan to do it, that 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 is one very exciting course. Um, the last one in the uh, AI track is IoT and hardware security. This is a very new uh, you know, integration of hardware security with IoT. Um, in this course, you will learn different embedded systems. Um, at the moment, we are looking into uh, introducing FPGAs, which is Field Programmable Gate Array Hardware Platform uh, that is also used uh, in IoT platforms. Um, it is more complex complex than Raspberry Pis and Arduino boards uh, because it enables the user to design hardware, write the hardware, not just the software. So that's really exciting. Um, so we learn how to design an IoT along with how to make it secure. So we will learn about the hardware interfaces like UART, I2C, um, and how these devices are connected, what are the security vulnerabilities at the hardware level, the security vulnerabilities at the embedded level, and, uh, and when the device communicate with each other, how the, uh, the diff different levels of security vulnerabilities can uh, make the system weak. So this is a very interesting lab-based course. So you will, be, uh, you will get lab instructions to follow and complete so that not only you learn the concepts, but also apply them and, and you can, you know, this will be, this will definitely strengthen the resume that you have hands-on experience um, in IoT and FPGAs. So this is basically an overview of uh, AI track. The, uh, the understanding is that if you have knowledge, then how, for example, if you know how to program or if you enjoy programming, uh, then you will be able to work in Python uh, do some hands-on labs in AI as well as in IoT. Um, so, the, the, so this is the sample uh, session for the plan of study, uh, where, like Dr. Chu mentioned, that we will be. We recommend that we take at least we start off with the core classes, um, the A plus because the security, you have to have it for the security plus, and Python because you have to have Python for. AI as well as for the IoT class. So it, it, I highly recommend that if you're in this AI track that you 
consider taking these two courses because then it opens up your opportunities of taking other courses uh, in January session. So it, it, this plan of study, for example, says you can take Security Plus and Cisco Cyber Ops, but you will also have an opportunity to take maybe IoT Security or AI in the session two. Um, and, and similarly, if you, uh, instead of Cyber Ops, if you take AI and in the third session, you can take uh, uh, Cyber Ops and IoT Security. So this is like a mix and match you can uh, do and, and uh, make, make some changes. So again, it's not a hard and fast rule that you have to follow this plan of study. But this is uh, an easy way to go about if you, uh, you know, if you like to keep all the headaches away, uh, because we also make sure that all the prerequisites are taken care of if you do it in this flow. All right. Uh, so please feel free to ask me any questions if you have uh, on the AI track. And I can check the messages if you have any. Yes, thanks, Christy, for clarification. These courses. The first time AI and IoT will be offered in from January, but they will be continued um, in 2022. All right, so um, Christy, am I missing any messages or is there any questions for yeah, me? Yeah, there was a question about does, a, uh, does AI ML, so the, the AI machine learning course cover statistics or linear algebra knowledge like causal inference? Um, so this, Courses being developed, uh, AI courses developed by Matthew. Um, so I don't want to say anything on his behalf, but uh, st statistical analysis to the level where you know how to do regression analysis. Uh, for example, you have you know how to perform uh, draw. I mean, how to plot a histogram. I I believe there is somewhat knowledge that will be um, you know uh, will be given, but it, the more focus is on hands on. So for example, if you have a machine learning, for example, if you, how to design a neural network, um, what is a training set? What is a, you know, test set? So these, the focus will be more on that, but definitely some basics will be covered in the, in the course. All right, thank you very mm -hmm. much. All right, uh, thank next, you. next, we're gonna move on to Rami and Captain Glenn Hernandez. Rami, if you'd like to introduce him. Yes, absolutely. Let me share my screen here. If you don't mind, if you can share the screen. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Captain Glenn Herndon. It's, it's, um, he's, he's, uh, he's our former United States Coastal Guard Chief Information Security Officer, and he's also uh, has many, many leadership um, uh, positions, and he's um, uh, a good friend of us here in Ivy Tech in the state of Indiana also. Uh, I met Glenn as a national director for the US Cyber Challenge, uh, a couple years ago, and we become friend, and I'm so happy to introduce Glenn to you. Glenn, you're there? Yes, sir. No, happy to join you all. Go ahead. So, uh, Glenn, you tell us a little about cybersecurity jobs when it comes into student actually attending this program here. What are the potential for them to find job in the cybersecurity field? You, as a CISO of the former CISO for the U.S. Coastal Guard, what do you think they should be focusing on in order to maximize their chances of getting jobs in cybersecurity? So many opportunities, especially in today's world with threats that are uh, impacting our government, our uh, industrial base and, and our private sector and even, you know, everyday systems within our cities and, and state and communities, they're all being impacted in some way in regards to cyber. And so the skills and um, attributes that you learn through programs like this at Ivy Tech uh, are very valuable uh, to the nation in overcoming a lot of these challenges. Um, I, I see it every day uh, when I was running the U.S. Cyber Challenge that there's a lot of talent uh, out, thr out throughout the world, in the nation, and it's really tapping into what inspires you to learn more you know, understanding what attributes can you apply from your personal, you, you know, uh, knowledge and uh, learning and, and your own learning style and, and sh shaping that uh, and focusing it onto something that can be contributing uh, to helping organizations overcoming these challenges. And, and I know programs like yours, uh, Professor uh, Rami, uh, are based on the NSACAE the Center of Academic Excellence uh, criteria, uh, which is uh, really based on a, a very basic framework 
that the nation uses. And, and I'll share that framework if you're not familiar with, uh, with the National in Initiative uh, for Cybersecurity Education. And I'm gonna share a lot of things in the chat uh, that you're welcome to go to and, and look for yourself as, as to uh, you know, how, uh, at least within the federal government and the military, they're really shaping the future positions uh, for these cyber roles. And so uh, with this NIST framework, every cyber position in the government uh, is uh, required uh, to be structured against the NICE framework, uh, like I mentioned. So if you go to the uh, NIST site, you can see uh, what the framework uh, looks like, uh, but I'm gonna give you a couple of links that you really want to um, look into here uh, in the next couple minutes. So uh, there is a site called cyberseek.org. If you're not familiar with it, I've shared it many times with folks, and, and it's a good site to get understanding across the nation what the heat map uh, looks like in terms of talent and positions uh, in the country. So you may be uh, obtaining, uh, you know, education and training here uh, through this forum, but in terms of where the future positions and where the needs are in the nation, uh, I use this site a lot uh, in cyberseek.org to get an understanding of where the concentration of uh, positions are, what type of positions uh, are they seeking, and, and it's really helpful to really use that to uh, identify, you know, what companies are looking for? What is the government looking for? Um, and once once you sort of get an understanding of, you, you know, where you want to work or what type of role, um, there, there's another site that just recently came up within the last year. And and I highly encourage you to, to look at this. And maybe Rami, if you can uh, put that up on your screen, if you could share that. For sure. I yeah. really like folks to see this. Uh, because um, CISA, uh, the Critical Infrastructure Security Agency, really put a lot of time and effort to really empower uh, that workforce framework uh, for cyber education and, and make it more um, dynamic uh, for the community that really wants to go into these type of future positions. So uh, let me know if you're able to get that up on the screen, Rami. I get the CISA.gov. Is that what you're talking about, the infrastructure? Yes. Which one is? Yep. Yes. Are you able to put that up? Yep, it's on the screen right now. You can see it. Yeah. I'm okay, great. So, so in this site, it, it's rather dynamic uh, because you're able to see a number of positions um, that that are in accordance with the Nice framework. And then in these roles, you can go to the uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and the task. Uh, that are required to fill these roles in the government, because what's going to happen, and it's already happening today, for future positions, if you're going to go into a military position or a federal position, right, they're required to abide by th this framework, and this sort of helps you as you're going through the courses, you know, what education should you be seeking to, and certifications should be seeking to attain those skills, and, and so you can put complete these tasks uh, that the government's looking for. And so it's a, it's a really dynamic tool that uh, other folks have told me has been helpful uh, to find jobs. And, and if you go to one in particular, Rami, if you go to um, the cyber effects one, you'll see uh, some, something called uh, cyber uh, operations. I don't know if you see that, if you can get that up, Rami. I'm looking for it right now, operation. Got it. So, um, so there should be a couple tabs that open there for um, the USA jobs postings and, and a PDF uh, with descriptions. And so the, it, it's updated all the time. And, and so one of the things I've seen is by using this, you can see what the government's looking for at any particular time um, and what type of job positions are, are they advertising for and what are the pathways to those jobs uh, in the future. And, and it gives you the entire breakdown of all the uh, particular uh, requirements. And, um, and in some cases, the, the clearances. Um, if, if you haven't discussed it in any of your uh, cohort groups, uh, clearances are necessary to fulfill some of these positions within the government and, and being able to pass those clearance checks are important to get into these national security positions and making sure that you're eligible uh, to serve in these roles. And in my experience, that's usually a deal breaker 
uh, when folks are unable to obtain those clearances and folks attaining these roles uh, is because they didn't pay attention uh, to uh, completing the appropriate national security checks to fill these roles because you know the government uh, really relies on trust uh, and and the workforce really to enable the tools that they're uh, entrusted to use and and you really have to uh, you know really think hard uh, are are you uh, really wanting to serve in these type of positions to help because the government has many more complex problems that you would generally see uh, in the private sector and it's the access um, to those problems that's that's really unique and that's what I benefited by serving uh, within the United States Coast Guard and getting to see with Cyber Command uh, with DHS and CISA the really broad spectrum uh, and complex problems uh, around our nation and and folks uh, need folks like you uh, to get the education and training uh, to fill the jobs in the future. And so I'll pause there um, because I do have another section uh, that can help others if they're not sure uh, where to go. Any questions? So Mark has a question, say, are the certification included in this training enough to get a job? And this is maybe a question to all the PI, including myself. Uh, the, 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 Matthew, is, is Matthew there or anyone who would answer that question? Michael, I think I could answer that question. Th these classes prepare you to actually get ready for certification. This, this, the, the concept here is to have the foundation, the knowledge, the traditional education in these four universities uh, to be able to pass that certification. We also prepare you for certification because we use, use the Cisco Academy, Red Hat Academy. We use a multiple academy. Also, we use NetLab. So uh, it does really prepare you for the certification. If you study how, for example, the Cisco Cyber Ops Edition, actually I designed for the whole state, uh, that class actually is a Cisco Academy course. You log in the Cisco Academy and you do the labs on the Cisco Academy. You're not doing an Ivy, Ivy Learn and Ivy Tech Canvas. Well, I think Rami, that no, the, the question is uh, probably especially for those who maybe don't have a degree, if they just get these certifications, is that going to be enough for a job? And I can somewhat, so, so one of the things that we need to mention is as part of this program, we are not gonna be placing you all into jobs. Now, the program managers are starting to develop relationships with employers. And honestly, it depends on the employer. Some want people to have a degree, a bachelor's degree or higher, and then these certifications help. Some just want the certifications. So it is all really going to de depend on the employer um, you know, as to, the certifications, if that will be enough for a job. But that is the whole point of this program is that these certifications will help you get jobs in the workforce. Um, but right. yeah, maybe somebody else can help. Um, right, I, I can, can give an example. One of my former students actually at Ivy Tech and actually thanks to Glenn actually, who was the national director for the US Cyber Challenge. He went through the program and he, of course he won uh, regional and national competition. And Daniel right now, he worked for defense contracting company. He is in Ohio. And he barely had his associate degree. Um, that, that's a question I would actually would prefer to actually glean see any feedback. The student can, without a college degree, can they actually get a, they have a certification, can get a job in cybersecurity? What do you think? Sure. No, I anticipated that question uh, because th the government uh, intently is really trying to reshape the prospects that are obtaining skills and education and really focusing on skills. Uh, not necessarily degrees or certifications. Yes, they're, they're absolutely helpful. They verify that you've attained a certain level of education or, or training uh, for a, a specific skill, but demonstration of skills is, is what the government and the Office of Personnel are really trying to highlight. And, and what uh, Professor uh, Rami mentioned uh, was the US Cyber Challenge. Be games and competitions uh, like uh, CTF capture the flag competitions are, are really trying to uh, expand on, on, on the notion that skills matter, uh, ver are very important and they matter uh, a lot to companies and organizations in demonstrating that individuals can perform in the roles, not necessarily do you have um, you, you know, all the degrees and all the certifications, because in my experience, ha having uh, done this for many years in the Coast Guard, you can have folks come in with lots of degrees, but they couldn't apply 
what they had learned to the specific problems that the organization was really trying to tackle. And, and that's what organizations need today uh, because they don't have the automation, they don't have all the tools, and, and they can't afford uh, a lot of the infrastructure. And so they need smart people who can really uh, take on complex problems and, and really decipher those and come up with unique approaches to solve those problems for the organizations. And, and, and that's that's really what I hope a program uh, like this can help individuals is really find what their inner strengths are in their uh, knowledge and skills and be able to apply what they have attained to help organizations. And that's where you see a real difference. If I, if I can have an individual uh, that's, you, you know, probably not as proficient in all the programs and getting all the certification degrees, but they can come in and they can operate and understand a language and be able to understand how that language is not uh, being efficient uh, within the implementation within the enterprise. That's more valuable to me than having somebody that has, you, you know, multiple four-year degrees or even a master's degree and can't decipher and, and help me with the, the problem. And so, I, I would encourage folks to really use some of the links that I shared today uh, to help you find out what calls to you uh, and, and what you think uh, aligns with your personality and your interests and, and look across the nation, you know, what companies are looking for, what's the government looking for, and where do you think you can see yourself helping that organization uh, in, in your value of your talent. And, and that's what I encourage uh, folks to do in forums like this, and I'm happy to uh, share more, Rami, but I'm not sure what how much time you have left. We're over on time, we're, actually. We're on time. <laughs> but um, I did want to mention, because um, you mentioned the links, uh, the chat is also going to be sent when we send the um, when we send the this recording on on Friday, uh, the chat is also going to be sent. So if you miss those links, you'll be able to go back and access those when we send this orientation out. If, if I can leave you honest with one last thing, uh, with the selection of uh, Mr. The Honorable Chris Inglis, who's going to be the National Cyber Director, uh, I've personally met with him and I'm going to be working with his office over the next couple of years in identifying how is the nation going to position uh, a lot of the things that I mentioned today to help out all organizations within government and private industry. And he is committed to having a workforce that's aligned with the programs uh, that you're doing uh, with the NIST C CAE and, and trying to empower organizations like Ivy Tech uh, to help people attain the skills uh, to help the nation. So keep an eye, you can follow, follow me on LinkedIn, uh, Glenn Hernandez, um, and, and thank you for the time. Thank you very much, Glenn. And this is uh, Glenn, of course, but biography. We didn't give justice really to this Glenn enough. Glenn, not only this Chief Information Security Officer for US, United States Coastal Guard, but he's also Executive Advisor, Strategist, and he's a keynote speaker, and also he is a Shard Thing judge. Is that correct, Glenn? So no, he, <laughs> no, I'm I'm just I'm just glad to share with you folks. Have a great right. night. And it's also there's a lot of stuff you can actually talk about. He's, and also Glenn in charge of the United States Cyber Committee for FCF. We actually make report and we make recommendation to the Congress about cybersecurity a curriculum for the whole United States. But thank you for coming, Link. Really appreciate you coming here on a very short notice today. Um, yes, sir. And, uh, thank you. Good sir. luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you, Rami, for in, for uh, helping us get Glenn here to talk to the students about some of the opportunities. And I know as veterans, you actually have a leg up on a lot of the stuff. You have an in with the government. So make sure that you're utilizing the resources that are available to you as a military member or veteran. All right, so I think that's all the time that we have for tonight. Uh, does anybody anybody on the team have anything that they need to add real quick? Yeah, there. The, sorry, there was one thing that I was asked to um, reiterate, sure. and that was just the time commitment that this program does take. Um, again, these are college level <clears throat> courses. You will have your lecture time, you will have your lab time, um, you know, quiz time. And we have tried to express the amount of time that this will take. However, at any point, if you feel like it is too much, please reach out to your program, um, your, your program manager or Amber is the program advisor. We can always drop you down from two classes to one class. Um, we know life happens. <laughs> we know, it, we, we're seeing it. Um, 
but this is a time commitment and it probably is taking more time than a lot of participants realize when they start. Um, but just keep keep us in the loop of what's going on so we can decide, you know, you might need to drop drop your courses and start again in another session. There is even, yes, you can take classes twice. Uh, some are even taking it a third time. Um, so um, so there's a, there, there is some flexibility, so we just have to know what's going on. Um, and then, yes, this will be this recording, the chat, uh, the, the PowerPoint will all be mailed to everybody. Um, I believe Amber said on Friday, she will email it to all the uh, participants. Um, no, a, repeating a class does not count against um, the class limits. All we are looking at is you get three certifications. Um, now we, you, three times taking class might be it. We, we, um, but um, it does not. Yes, you can take classes multiple times if need be. It's it's okay um, if there's if there's space in the classes. We're just, running a little bit over time, and yeah, everyone sure. needs to get home to their families. So I'd like to thank everybody for, for joining us this evening. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to any one of us who you've, who you've met tonight. I know that I've answered plenty of questions for some of you all, uh, and I'm happy to do so in the future. And have a great night. Thank you.